So you know our fourth aircraft, she's very beautiful, uh, Mandawurji, we're very excited to bring her home and uh, to have Australians enjoy her. I believe there are 702 dots <laughs> and the significance is really that um, it's a, a crop from the artwork. So, so basically the scale is what creates the number of dots and it's interesting designing a fuselage is not as straightforward as it might seem and uh, you know what does it look like from an air bridge, what does it look like in the sky, what does it look like up close. And uh, so scale is important and that will determine how many dots. How does it make you feel to, to fly for an airline that, that is very proud of its, of its heritage? Uh, look, it de demonstrates such, uh, you know, our, our values of uh, inclusiveness and, um, you know, a diversity and, you know, our respect for the culture, the people. Um, it's just a wonderful demonstration of, of that uh, dedication. I think it's wonderful. And to have it appear on an aeroplane, such a terrific paint scheme is very special. I actually found the um, ceremony quite moving. Having done uh, quite a few uh, deliveries, this one is so very special. Um, it was just so impressive uh, with all of the, the gum trees and the water from, um, from, the, from the region all the way out here, such a great Australian feel, it was just wonderful. Um, you've certainly flown your fair share of aircraft, how, how do you think you will feel flying this baby home tomorrow? Um, like anything, it, it'll be the memories uh, of you know first seeing the aeroplane, uh, the beauty of the paint scheme, uh, the ceremony that we've just witnessed, uh, the people that have been involved. Um, all of that will be you know part of the experience of flying the aeroplane. It'll stay with me forever. It's uh, it's it's wonderful. Just associated with with the early part of this aeroplane. The design that you see before you today is based on the 2005 painting by Mr. Bedford, Medicine Pocket and it's been adapted so beautifully for the aircraft fuselage by the team at Ballaringi, working with the Bedford Trust and the National Gallery of Australia. For the first time, the iconic Qantas red tail is incorporated into the design of this special livery, altered to match the earthy tones of the original artwork. Yeah.
You know, to our team and the Boeing team who worked together so closely from Qantas to the National Gallery to the Paddy Bedford Estate, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of people with a lot of heart, I think, in this project. And, you know, seeing the Gidget women arrive and see the aircraft today for the first time and the emotion that that elicited in them and then bringing the old man's hat and his clapsticks and I think it was a really emotional day and uh, everyone loves the aircraft so it was just a great day. Um, Qantas flew our first scarves, our first silk scarves and very lightweight wool scarves in flight and as a new business we we're very grateful and 10 years on um, our art aircraft series began. so lucky to have the opportunity to be part of the aeroplane's um, first flights, uh, particularly being able to visit the Seattle factory, see how the aeroplanes are built, uh, be part of the acceptance process for, uh, on behalf of uh, Qantas with Boeing and then uh, fly out of Seattle uh, to uh, terrible destinations like Honolulu uh, where we refuel and then fly down to Fiji another terrible destination as we make our way into Australia with uh, about 30 people on board out of an aeroplane that carries um, 168 people so it's just a, a unique experience and, and very memorable because you know it, you, you're part of the beginning of the aeroplane's um, life in our airline and uh, it's, it's very special. So we get to fly with Boeing and uh, make sure that the aeroplane meets our specifications and by the time we accept the aeroplane and sign for it and uh, Pay, pay the bill. Um, it's got about five hours of flight time on it and only about three landings so it's in pristine condition just that fantastic uh, you know new car smell except magnified about a hundred times and uh, it's just absolutely perfect. The aeroplane uh, when we get to flight is in perfect condition you know all the leading edges are, are polished the wing is super clean uh, everything's brand new 
and we get to fly the airplane through some uh, unusual conditions uh, to make sure that it's uh, appropriate uh, for us and everything works properly. And it's like anything uh, new, it's, um, it's special, it's just magnified many times. And it's like getting that new car that you've always wanted, but you know, just on a much larger scale and just to be part of that uh, when it's brand new and then seeing it as it, as it ages uh, in the fleet, it's just uh, great to compare how, how the airplanes have evolved. But um, you know, it's just an outstanding experience, very special. This one in particular is just uh, extra special with all the, uh, the special paintwork that we have, of course, so that's made it even better than it's been before, if that's possible.
to open it up. It's nice to get home. It's always nice to do it on a Qantas aircraft, but uh, yeah, the significance of this flight's quite amazing. Uh, I actually didn't know much about Old Man before and his artwork and the stories behind his art, but uh, after this trip, um, I've learned quite a lot and I'm going to make sure I get down to Melbourne and see his exhibition and get a real understanding how talented Old Man was and the stories behind his artwork. And to be involved in the ceremony of this plane has been quite amazing. It's quite amazing they can build an aeroplane in 10 days and after that 10 days and a bit of testing you can take it home. So that's the journey we're on now and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And you're enjoying being on a brand new aeroplane? Yeah, I yeah. am. It's got that nice fresh car smell when you buy your, your brand new car. Yeah, it's exactly right. And it's always nice to sit out the front and, and get looked after. But uh, no, it is, it is uh, quite a, an epic flight for everyone on here and um, I think everyone feels pretty special to be on it.
am so delighted to be here to not only celebrate the delivery of this beautiful brand new airplane, but also honor a flying tribute to the oldest continuous culture in the world. Now the history of Qantas and Boeing goes back quite a long ways, but not near as far as the Australian Aborigines. But we are so proud that we are a part of this. And 20 years ago today, some of you, not necessarily today, but 20 years ago, some of you may remember the first in a series of flying tributes to the Aboriginal culture. And that was a 747 Qantas airplane that was painted and delivered in 1994. So here we are, almost two decades later, now celebrating the fourth airplane in this series of flying art. Let's take a moment to admire Mendawuji, I think I said that right, this beautiful 737-800 that carries not only the essence of the Aboriginal culture, but of Western Australia. Didn't the guys do a great job? So on behalf of everybody here at Boeing that brought this together, including the painters who we have some of them here today, who pioneered new techniques and brought this indigenous livery to life, let's once again congratulate Qantas and all of our special guests on this achievement today. Now I'd like to invite Laura Berry, who is the head of community for Qantas, to come up and say a few things about the airline. In particular, as John mentioned, I'd like to pass on my thanks to the guys from the paint shop. I know that it was a, a, an interesting and different process for you this time to achieve the techniques that we see on the aircraft behind us and to truly ensure that the, uh, the techniques that you see here reflect the original artwork. I'd like to acknowledge Kathy Watson, Mona Ramsey and Shirley Purdy, John and Rose Moriarty and James Moriarty, Adam Goods, Qantas's newest ambassador, and Francesca and Simon from the National Gallery of Australia. As John mentioned, Qantas and Boeing have worked together since the late 1950s and it's been a remarkable aviation partnership with many significant milestones. Today we celebrate another significant milestone, the delivery of our fourth aircraft in the Indigenous Flying Art Series, Mendelji. This continues a long partnership between Qantas and Ballaringi that we have collaborated on on all four of our aircraft with Indigenous liveries. The design that you see before you today is based on the 2005 painting by Mr Bedford, Medicine Pocket and it's been adapted so beautifully for the aircraft fuselage by the team at Ballaringi, working with the Bedford Trust and the National Gallery of Australia. For the first time, the iconic Qantas red tail is incorporated into the design of this special livery, altered to match the earthy tones of the original artwork. The delivery of Mendelwoodji comes at a significant time for Qantas. Through our reconciliation action plan, we are playing our part in the drive to secure social, cultural and economic advancement for Indigenous Australians. We're a founding member of Supply Nation, which aims to ensure that Australia's biggest companies work with Indigenous suppliers throughout our supply chain. The collaboration between Qantas, Boeing and Ballaringi to create this aircraft is a powerful symbol of what can be achieved through supply diversity. Once again, it's an honour to be here. On behalf of everybody at Qantas, including our CEO, Alan Joyce, I'd like to sincerely thank everybody involved in the design, production and delivery of the Mendorji. We are very proud to welcome this unique Boeing aircraft into our fleet and we can't wait to fly home on it tomorrow. I'd now like to ask Roz and John Moriarty to come to the stage. Thank you. So on behalf of Ballaringi, on behalf of James, John and myself, um, who are here to witness the launch, um, thank you and uh, particularly a warmest welcome and a great honour for us to have with us the elders from Gija in Western Australia, from, uh, the, um, from the old man's country, Cathy Watson, Namajili, the old man's daughter, Mona Ramsey, Nyaru, niece, 
and Shirley Purdy, 71 Nangari from Gija. Thank you for coming from Woman to Kananara to Broome to Sydney to LA <laughs> and to Seattle. So it's, uh, it's an honour that you've included us. Thank you for our headbands. This is a very strong women's story here on Mandawurchi and uh, we, we're grateful for you including us. Thank you to the National Gallery of Australia, to Francesca Camillo, Simon Elliott. Thank you for the collaboration. And to the Bedford Estate, through William Mora, representing the artist collections here today. A big thank you to Boeing and particularly to the paint shop guys. So Mike Myers and uh, Steve Hoy and your whole team. Apparently we had the A team in Hangar 5, both shifts, and uh, I can attest to the difficult job and the difficult task that we gave you and uh, the willingness with which you were able to test new methods, break new ground, and create something that the old man's family and the National Gallery of Australia and Qantas and Boeing and Ballerinji can say we are truly proud of. Paddy Bedford, also known as his Gija name, Kumji, was a man of Joali skin. He was born in 1922 and named for the station where he was born. In his life, he was a singer, dancer, and artist. He was also a stockman at Bedford Downs and Greenfield Station, Bow River Station, and Texas Downs, but not in America. Alongside stock work, he travelled country and developed knowledge as well of traditional law and ceremony. What we see here is a very deep depiction of that meaning and his country and the sense of his spirit here. He began painting only in his early 70s. He held his first show in 1998. Every show was a sellout, whether it was to national or international audiences. All Australian museums collect his work and most have more than one. The Quay Bronley in Paris commissioned his work for their building. He had a minimalist aesthetic and he was one of the first Kimberley painters to employ a gestural, gestural imagery through the shading you see on the aircraft that the Boeing guys had such a challenge and rose to such an occasion to depict. I'd like to support those words that Roz said, particularly about the teams here, but also about the old fellow I'd like to say a few words. He was a great man. I'd met him on a number of occasions up there in Kananara, where he was painting. Also, uh, i travelled down to Warman a couple of times. But that old man grew up in tough times in those early settlement days in the Kimberley area, the East Kimberleys. But he was a strong ceremonial man. He walked the land, he was a strong stockman, he was one of those fellows that kept the culture alive and he was very strong and of course you can see it's reflected uh, with the three magnificent ladies we have here today that will speak on his behalf and perform on his behalf. He was a great man, his strong ceremonial lines still live today. Unfortunately times are changing but we are very fortunate here to have his art placed on such an iconic machine like the 737 here. We pay tri tribute to the old man and his art and this plane. Thank you. So Menda Waraji, the painting, it's from a piece of country in Eastern Kimberley. The painting is called Medicine Pocket. It's been gifted to the National Gallery of Australia by the Paddy Bedford Estate and it depicts the artist's mother's country. It depicts a water hole near Dundi, near the Ord River in Western Australia, and it's a water hole that never dries up. It's also the place of Wanangal, the crow. She was a woman who camped there during the dream time. I'd like to invite Kathy Watson, the old man's daughter, 
to begin our ceremony today that is such a privilege for us all to be involved in. I'd like to pay um, tribute to Pontus and Boeing to make this most prestigious event happening here, far away from home, at Waterman Taki Creek. I'd like to thank um, each and every one of you from the bottom of our heart, on behalf of my cousin sister, Mona Ramsey, my niece, Shirley Purdy, uh, who it's a big, big travel for all of us. And often dad is to say, I'm, I'm gonna have a plane. Lud Maria, that's what's my wish name after my grandmother. And I said, she was dad, you know. And yes, and also the highest and kindest tribute to William Mora. He's been a loyal and a family friend in regards to supporting dad and the Aboriginal people paintings. Um, I'd also like to thank Qantas and Boeing. For the first time, dad is the first Aboriginal artist from Western Australia and the remote community Kimberleys to promote and make this thing happen proper too far away from home. And it's good to see each and every one of you sharing our culture today here. And to Adam Goods, our ambassador for Qantas and also a great AFL player, West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, um, we saw we always see Adam on the TV, but it was just too deadly to see him in the raw. <laughs> um, a lot of our little guys say, you know, they got their little idols, and Adam is one of them. But to each and every one of you, us, and uh, the first gentleman who opened and welcomed everybody, yes, it's an honor to share our culture far away from home as Australian. Aboriginal people, I'm sure Dad will be proudly just sipping his lemonade and is having a cigarette with the likes of Fred Murray and all the old guys that who were really instrumental in having this forward. To Laura, Rose, John, and each and every one of you who has made this happen. And now I'd like to invite Adam Goods to bring up Dad's one of his sentimental values, his cap or his hat that he used to sit and on the veranda or do his painting. Um, he has gone over six years, so I bought it all the way from Broome. And to Laura Berry, um, she's gonna be bringing up Dad's tapping sticks. He made that and painted it and said, Lud Maria, keep it. So on behalf of the family and friends of of our, our Aboriginal art in Western Australia and the Kimberleys, I thank you very much. Thank you.